now let's look at these two this one and this one let's look at these two uh, benzoic acid has two oxygen atoms while this compound which is the second one it has only one oxygen atom so definitely uh, benzoic acid will be more, more polar than this one so obviously we will have to assign one to this because if you see it has the least number of oxygen atoms among all three so it, it is the most non-polar among all three so since it is the most non-polar among, uh, among all three we will assign one to this and we will assign two over here now you can see that we have um, assigned the spots to their respective compounds looking at the polarities and the mobile phase and the stationary phase so now let's do another question in paper or thin layer chromatography better separation may be achieved by running the chromatogram in one solvent then turning the paper at right angles and running it in another solvent the chromatogram below was produced in this way okay so first we ran it with solvent one and after because we must be facing some problems with solvent one we ran it again at right angles uh, we rotated it at right angles and we ran it in solvent 2 after that so <clears throat> ring the spot which was insoluble in solvent 1 which means it did not move from the reference in solvent 1 now you can see that first all of them went up so this spot went up this spot went up because this is the reference this is the reference line uh, this spot went up this spot did not move from the reference this spot moved, this spot moved, and even this spot moved. So, all these uh, spots have moved. However, the one that is not inside this circle that I've made, the one over here, uh, marked X, uh, for example, has not moved. So, um, this uh, spot was insoluble in solvent 1 because it hasn't moved from the reference. So, we will uh, ring this spot because it is insoluble in solvent 1 it hasn't moved upwards label as a and b the spots which were not resolved using solvent one okay so uh, by not resolved means that both of them overlapped so first we carried out with solvent one this one moved to this height very unique height this one moved till this height this one did not move at all this one moved till this height another unique height this one moved till this height now if you see both of these when when the chromatography was done in solvent one both of these moved up to the same height so since both of these were moved up to the same height they were overlapping because uh, we only got this separation because of solvent two when we had not used solvent two this spot which i can label a was somewhere over here a was somewhere over here initially so this spot was somewhere over here and then when we use solvent uh, when we use solvent 2 uh, a was moved till here so actually uh, the, the two solvents that were not resolved using solvent 1 were this one the two sol uh, the, the two solutes sorry the two solutes that were not resol uh, resolved using solvent 1 were this one and this one because uh, until and unless we use solvent solvent 2 both of them would not have gotten the separation so in solvent one both of them were overlapping so now we are done with this question as well and this one was the answer for the first part so the table shows three different techniques of chromatography identify which separation method partition or adsorption applies to each so pre paper chromatography we know it's partition thin layer chromatography obviously adsorption and uh, gas liquid chromatography partition again uh, thin layer chromatography is the only adsorption we have done till now now uh, the diagram represents the output from gas liquid chromatography carried out on a mixture so this is the solvent peak we, we are not concerned about this but we got two components from the solvent which uh, for, for, from the solute mixture sorry this was x and y these were the two components that we got so Determine the percentage of each of these two components, X and Y, in the mixture. So what we will do is, um, we will calculate the area under curve for all, for, for both X and Y. And wait, the Y looks like X. Just let me 